today you guys are gonna see what wheels I got. And if you guys follow me on social media like Instagram or Facebook, I'm pretty sure you guys already saw them because the other day I posted a picture of them on before and after because I polished the lips on them. See, this is one of them before the lip got polished. I got various lines ES1s. They're brand new, it's just that they've been sitting in my garage so they look a little old. And I started taping this one and this one I still haven't touched. But I did already polish this one. It looks so much better. It's just a lip. It's all dusty. You see how now you can see a reflection. The wheels just look way better. I love how these wheels came out. I'm just waiting for some tires so I can throw these on, but let me stand these up. Here are the wheels. They need to be clean, but a nice thorough clean, but there's the lips after I polished them. The lips came out super dope. These wheels are gonna look dope. <laughs> I know you all seen, uh, you couldn't miss these chickens, but my dad bought these chickens a while back. He's gonna take them to Mexico because he's going to Mexico in the 25th for Christmas. He's gonna head to Mexico, so he's gonna take the chickens with him. But And then this one I polished as well. So I have only two done. And I still have to do two. I just haven't done it because it's freezing out here in Colorado. And the wheels right now, um, they don't clear my front brakes. So I need to get a five millimeter spacer. The wheels right now are 18 by 10 and a half plus 15. I got them really wide. Well, my plan was to get a, a Voltex wide body kit, but I did some test fitting on them and I'm gonna just try to run them with the stock body. I'm gonna just raise my car up a little bit and just run a little midi meteor fitment with a little bit of camber, not too much. I don't wanna be stupid camber like one of my previous cars. I just, I wanna have a nice flush look. I think it's finally gonna get some work on. It looks all high cause it's sitting on two by fours so I can get the jack to fit under, but it's finally gonna get some work done and I am gonna do all my, um, my intercooler piping and my valve cover. I'm gonna powder coat those dope color you guys will have to wait and see and then finally big things are coming for the evo well not so much big but it's more of the, like looks i guess you can say it's gonna look dope so right here i'm gonna I'm a, i found this guy locally that powder coats and he does he does pretty cheap and i was looking through his pictures and he does pretty good his name is jonathan and he works in the oil fields and he drives the rx7 and that thing looks dope. I'll show you guys once I take the parts over. I'm gonna start off by taking off the valve cover and I'm also gonna powder coat my um, intercooler piping such as my intake. And I think I'm gonna do that hard pipe as well, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just do all my intercooler piping mine as well. And I'm gonna do my valve cover. I'm thinking what color I should do this, if I should do the same color go too overboard because I chose a color that I think is gonna look dope but too much of it <coughs> it's cold too much of it I think will kill it so yeah I think I'm gonna leave that that color for now and I'm gonna just start off with my inner cooler piping and valve cover I'm not gonna tell you guys the color just yet I'm gonna let you guys have to wait at the end of the video but I promise y'all it's gonna be dope it's finally gonna get this nasty valve cover redone i was gonna do it originally the same red but i just i want to say i'm already powder coating paint to get a powder coat so i might as well do a another color and i am going to change this front bumper i have i still i'm still in love with the evil 9 bumper so i'm gonna just get an evil 9 bumper so yeah let's start the disassemble process but first i need a clear up some space in my garage because it is messy and i gotta move the chickens over there so i got the garage semi clean i kind of just push some stuff out the way threw some other stuff in the shed and i just put the chickens in the front and it's time to put the evo in
So I got the um, intercooler pipe that connects from the turbo to the um, blow off of. And now I'm gonna move forward to taking off the one that goes through my um, manifold. You good for my boy Eric right here. <laughs> so we got all the top intercooler pipes off, but this one that connects to the actual intercooler itself. We're gonna have to take off my front bumper for it so we can get that off. And I'm gonna get my front bumper so I can fix the mesh right here. Since I don't know why I had a big hole and I'm gonna cut these off so I can just throw on my new mesh. Is that just a pushing clip? Yep. This one doesn't come out. I tried turning it already and it just doesn't come out, so I'm gonna have to break it off. I think we're just gonna take oh, off. Oh, you're gonna take off this, this pipe. We're gonna leave the intercooler on. But we got the bumper off, y'all. And we're just gonna take off this pipe. If you want, grab a, a flathead screwdriver full and unscrew this clip. You're gonna need the little one though. And I'll take off this bolt at the top that's holding it in place. It's loose over here, so it should just pop right out. You can move it around and find a place. My camera's on 1%. I'm gonna put it to charge, and I'll bring it back once I take the valve cover off. I already got all the intercooler piping off. It's right here. What's up, guys? We're back, and it's the next day. Last night, I wrapped it up. I didn't do too much because my camera died, so I kind of just loosened up the whole valve cover and I was waiting to get it pulled off today when I charged it. I just love that ass, look at it. I love the JDM rear, man. I think that exhaust makes it look so dope. So yeah, I got all the bolts out, I think. Um, yeah. This thing looks mean, though, without my bumper all right so i think i got all the bolts out i'm not too sure because yesterday i did some pulling on it and it wouldn't budge at all so i'm trying to see if there's any other bolts i missed i know you probably see a lot of bolts but it's just the bolts that i screwed back in place just so it can hold just i'm not just so it can hold just so it can um will stay in place and I don't lose the bolts later. But no, it should just come off. Let's do some pulling on this see If it comes. Might have to, all right. Okay, so I took, off the, I took out the spark plugs and the coil pack and then I, I took out the cross brace just so I can get a little more room. But I already got this to pop out. I just can't. And this wire is what's holding it down. And it runs to the injector harness. But right down there, I don't know if you can see the flash on, but this wire, not this one, I got all these out, runs down to that plug, but I can't get the plug to come out. I'm thinking of taking off the bulb, but it's out, but I'll show you guys what I mean. So when you pull it, it's held down by this. Guys, so I got it out right here I just put some needle nose pliers to that and then I pulled off it was just clipped on so now I can get that out the way and get the valve cover off it should just come off now there we go guys I got the valve cover off and I think I might order a cam. Since I'm already here, I might as well order the cam, right? What do you guys think? I'm, I'm one of those people that aren't scared to try things, even if I don't know what I'm doing, you know what I mean? Like, 
like when I tell you guys like, oh, should I cam it? Like, I don't mean I'm gonna take it to a shop and get a cam. Like, I want, I want to do it on myself. If I break it, then I break it. You know, I learn from my own mistakes. Like a lot of people are scared to take chances. You know what I mean? Like, I know people that that know what they're doing, but don't want to put hands in their own cars because they're scared they're gonna fuck something up or mess something up. You know? And me, like. I think it's it's all experience like if you don't try it you're not gonna succeed so you I don't know I just think everybody like if you want something you can accomplish it you can do it on your own you don't need to pay big money to do it I mean look it's all you got to do is remove the valve cover and the cams are right there for the evil and then I think I'm gonna order some I'm gonna just leave the car parked in here but for now, I'm going to take off my turbo manifold so I can get to my O2 housing. I'm going to start off by taking these. These are 12 millimeter bolts, and I think the bottom are like 13. Let's get to it. So I got all the bolts loose from the block to the manifold, and then I got these loose. But the ones in the back were here were a little pain in the butt. I had to hold it in the back with a 14, and I used my, my, my big drill because... This thing makes everything easy. Let me just take all of these off. I still have one more to loosen. All right guys, I got the manifold off. It wasn't as hard as I expected it was, but it was pretty tough to get my hands where like where these go, these bolts. But I'm glad I took the manifold because now I can actually see the bolts to my two housing and I can take them off. These look like a pain in the butt, but don't think I just took them off without doing anything else. No, no. I sprayed a bunch of PB blaster. I sprayed a bunch of PB blaster all over the bolts. I let it sit for a couple days and then I sprayed it again yesterday, last night. And then I started working on it and then loosened them. And I need to spray a lot on these because these don't look like they're going to come off easily at all. Don't want that going in there, you know? I'm gonna just put the bolts back in place and I'm gonna cover up all the holes so they don't get no dirt or debris in it. I picked up these and they're like they twist. Like these wrenches have like a like you should I'm not funny you know. Okay, you see how they like turn for those tough areas to get to, like for down here in the turbo, I can get it much easier. And let's get my um uh, two housing loose. I wish I had a GoPro so I can just mount it on my head and record what I'm doing the whole time. Because I had I had the little tripod thing. Well my dog's bit in, they broke they broke one of the legs on it, so now I have to hold it in pain in the butt without it, so I need to go buy one, but this chick is being loud. <laughs> I'm gonna make a quick bathroom run because I can't hold it no more. All right, so I'm here trying to get this bolt closer to the radiator without taking the radiator. So I just got a long extension. Well, kind of connected a couple of extensions. And the bolt's right down there. Can't find the size of the nut. I couldn't get that bolt out, so I went ahead and drained my radiator fluid and I took out my radiator and I got all bolts loose now. I'm getting ready to take off the last bolt. This was the bolt that was being the pain. See, now that the radiator is off, there's so much more room to play with. You've been going nice all day? Huh? I gotta leave. Oh, and I probably had an exhaust leak here. The gas gets all ripped. Ah, finally. 
All right, guys, so I'm gonna just end the video here because I'm not, I don't have all the parts with me. I still gotta take all the piping and the valve cover to get powder coated. And I still waiting on my O2 to come in the mail. So I'm gonna just end it here and then just stay tuned for the next video. I'm probably gonna disassemble some more things and show you guys some more things I've got. But subscribe and like, like always. Thank you all for watching.